Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and we've been talking about adding buttons to our Phaser 3 game. So in the last couple of videos, we looked at the Rex UI uh, button, the Rex UI plugins that you can install and use the button from there. We talked about Boma, a CSS framework, and you can use the same technique to add any button from any CSS framework to your game. So the Boma button looks like this. You just click me with the GitHub icon. This is a DOM element. If you wanna see how we did both of those examples, check out our previous videos. In this video, we're gonna actually make a button from scratch natively in Phaser. If you want to make um, serious customizations like, like wood panel backing or you know things to make your game way more immersive UI. So if you're looking to do that, this is how you can make a custom button. So let's get started. I'm gonna move myself here to the bottom right, about right there. So we're gonna make a new scene in our project. So we've been using the Phaser 3 parcel template. You can find it at the Arcade GitHub at github.com slash arcade slash phaser3 dash parcel dash template. But whatever setup you're using should work fine as well. We're using TypeScript code. Uh, if you're using modern JavaScript, the code will be basically the same. Just get rid of all the types. So that is that, um, the setup so that our setup will work with your setup. And so we're gonna make a new scene here to put our custom button code into. So we're gonna make a new scene. We're gonna call this custom button demo scene.ts. So in much the same way we've done before, we're gonna first import phaser, then we are going to export the default. The default export is going to be a class we make, which is custom button demo scene. That's what I named it. It extends phaser.scene. Put a constructor in here. Do super. And give it a key, custom button. We will probably have something to preload. Well, I know we will, because we're gonna use custom graphics. And we're gonna have a create. So let's put in console.log custom button to make sure that is happening. So we've left off here. We've got our uh, Bulma demo scene, but we don't want that right now. So we're gonna go to this hello world scene. So if you've not seen the other videos, it looks like this. There it is. And okay, so instead what we're gonna do just would delete that would delete that. Okay. Import custom button demo scene from scenes. Custom button demo scene. And we will run or start that first. Custom button demo scene. Here it is, custom button. So we see this create is getting is getting called. So that's working. So we are going to load we have these uh, button graphics. These are from Kenny, kenny.nl. That's K-E-N-N-E-Y.nl. That's his website. Do check it out. There's great uh, Creative Commons 0, Creative Commons 1 um, assets that you can use. He's got many. These are just three of them. These are three different buttons. And we're going to use that here. So we're going to preload these. So let's call this dot load dot image. Um, we're going to call this button one. It's in assets blue button 01. 01.png. I'll just copy that. Blue button 02. We'll call this button two. And then blue button 03. And we'll call this button three. So that preloads our buttons. So normally, let's just make sure that this is working. We can add, we can add an image at 400. Hello, at 400, 300, and let's just say button one. Right, we'll see it. There it is. And then, if you wanted to make this work, you can do set interactive. 
and then we can do on and I believe let's see phaser dot input dot events dot game object which is a game object down get a function and we will do console dot log let's say pressed okay so click didn't, didn't did not work let's see set interactive dot on beam object down yes. what am i missing so let's go to the arcade blog here so we're going to do something similar to this particular article not exactly let's just make sure we didn't forget anything mm -hmm. that's our home click okay mm -hmm. bug container Let's say button container. Container implements I button container on click. Implement rest of I button methods. Um, let's see. How did we set this up using the button container? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check out our more simplified because it does build on top of this article. We're not going to use um, RSJX in our example here. Set interactive dot on. Oh, it's not down. The event is wrong. It's pointer, pointer down. Okay. So now at least we have here this um, button, this image that can act as a button. So of course, we what we really want is the button to respond on over, on out, on click. And since in phaser, you can't add children to any game object, there's a flat hierarchy, we can use a container to contain all our buttons or different states into one, and then respond to the events by changing the button uh, texture out for over, out, and click. So if we're an extremely simple button, you can just do this, but there will be no out over effects. So to get those effects in, let's make our own custom class. So let's just create a new class. We're gonna call this, um, let's just call it custom button dot TS. Okay, let's collapse this and we will import phaser. We are going to use phaser dot container. So make a new class custom button extends phaser dot container now why does it not though phaser dot game objects dot container yes the so siri heard her name and decided to show up uh okay so we need a constructor and so what that constructor needs is it's going to need a scene, right? It's going to need an X, it's going to need a Y and children, but I don't think we don't really care about that. So scene is going to be a phaser scene. X will be a number, Y will be a number. Okay, so that's good. So that's good. So let's see. Now, we could pass in all the images here for up, um, for over, out, up, all those various events. But let's just say, well, let's just say, so this dot set interactive, and then on, so phaser dot input dot events dot game object. So now we know it's not just down, it's pointer, so pointer over, so I want to handle over, right? I want to handle over, and then we want to also handle phaser dot input dot fence dot game object pointer out. And in those cases, we want to switch the texture. 
so we need to actually make so those are the events so then so this dot add probably so we're gonna do we're gonna do this this is typescript so we can give ourselves private class properties so we're gonna call this the up call the up image phaser dot game objects dot image and it, well no but in the question we're saying the constructor so private and then we have over image dot image so this dot up image is going to be scene dot add dot image right so if we passed in so let's just do that right here I'm going to call this up texture it's a string and then over texture is a string let's see the first one is actually right position so zero zero up texture and then this dot over image so right now these are being of course added to the scene we're going to relocate them right after this that's over texture so now this dot add that existing we are in a container yep this dot add this dot up image this dot add this dot over image so i'm going to move these into our container so that's right and then the start over image is going to be hidden so let's see set visible false so on over this dot up image well let's just not do too much before we test this out so this is our, our button this could be correct let's see let's just try it out here import custom button from custom button let's get rid really get rid of this okay so it const button new custom button so we're going to pass in the scene we're going to put this at 400 300 uh, the up texture let's call it i think so that's two it's one it's three i think it's two and three so two is two is up button two and then button three for over so there's the button so this dot add dot existing button let's see what we got so the button is added okay there is a little warning there so i believe we can do that Put that hit area to call back is not a function. Let's see. Let's look at some docs. Dot add, and then oh, we're in there. So container. So let's look at this container. Phase of the game out the container. So set interactive. Okay. No, I want set. Okay, here we go. Shape either input a configuration object or a geometric shape that defines the hit area for the game object. If not specified, rectangle will be used. So this should be fine. We'll call set size first. That's my dog looking at a cat. Okay, so it's going to be the up image dot width, this dot up image dot height. So let's set that size, call set interactive. That warning goes away. That's good. So now let's do console.log over. Let's just make sure the code we already have is in fact working before we add too much code. It's always easier to work with less code than more code. So that's over, that's out, over, out, over, out. Beautiful. So of course on over we want to go from up image to over image so this dot up image 
dot set visible false this dot over image dot set visible true and on out we want to do the inverse of that so if this was false this should be true 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 tree true and this should be false all right there's that oh, look at that that works very cool so there's that button so now button dot let's see so it is the interactive already true but we could call it again it should be no problem so now on phaser dot input dot events dot game object pointer pointer down right that's what we used pointer down this is going to be our click event and so from here we're going to do this dot scene dot start and we're going to start the hello world scene which so this key is defined here in our hello world scene right here it's the same key and that's why that works custom button demo Let's see hello world save this okay it refreshed press there we go click all right so that's a custom button so we can even add some text so let's actually do that most of the time your button will in fact have text so let's go to our custom button and we're going to have a private so text uh, phaser dot game objects dot text and this dot text scene dot add dot text zero zero um click me and then this dot add this dot text dogs are being playful and we can do set origin half there to have it align better. There we go. So there's also other text style options you can pass in here. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this video. We'll cover that in another video. But you can all check out the documentation. Just look up text style. Text style. Uh, right here. To see. Right here, actually to see what you can put in there. Uh, we will we will in the future make a video going over how you can load um, fonts from Google Fonts into your game. You can actually check out our uh, making a phaser game, how to really make a phaser three game from scratch. Uh, one of those parts handles or looks at loading fonts from Google Fonts. We're gonna leave this as is for now. So there's your button with text. And when you click on it, go somewhere else now because this is a container you'll see that we can move this whole thing let's just let's see 400 is the middle so let's just move this down 100 pixels everything moves together right so there we go so that's one of the benefits of using a container the other way you can do is simply not use a container if you didn't want to and then <clears throat> put this this code basically all of this uh, minus this adding to the container in your scene and you'll basically have three objects uh, one on top of the other and you'll have to do this slightly differently than the on the over and out I totally recommend using a container for this it keeps your your button items together so that is your custom button you can add more to this if you want uh, like including changing text after the fact uh, you can give it like a class property here right set text and then let's say new text string and you would just do this dot text dot text uh, new text for example so that is buttons let me know in the comments below if you need help with anything else or everything is unclear using buttons in phaser 3